257. Let's all uh, turn to page 257 in a green hymn book and sing through it all. Praise the Lord. Then realize it was this page. We'll sing I Bankered in Jesus next, but it's just right across the other page. So we're singing 257, 256 tonight. Amen. Let's all stand. Praise the Lord. 257. Green hymn book. Yep, free flag.
God, we've learned. Hallelujah, to trust you, to depend on you, Lord, your word, because it's faithful. Hallelujah, we can have this confidence, Lord, when you said, Lord, you will perform. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah, I'm glad that we can have this confidence in the Lord. Hallelujah, if you said it, he'll do it. Amen. Amen. We can anchor our faith and hope in the Lord. Now let's turn across the page to 256 and sing, I've anchored in Jesus. Praise the Lord.
hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Our trust is not unfounded. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. He's the one who has the power. Praise the Lord. Amen. To see us through. Amen. To see us out. Praise God. Amen. Let's turn to page 354. Sing victory ahead. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm thankful that he can, he can bring the victory. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And when the host of
when the host of Israel, led by God, round the walls of Jericho, softly trod, trusting in the Lord. He knew what God had said. By faith I see the victory ahead. Oh, victory ahead. Yes, victory ahead. Through the blood of Jesus, victory ahead. Trusting in the Lord. I hear the conquerors tread. By faith I Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. I believe that God can give us victory. Amen. Praise the Lord. You can be seated if you'd like. So glad you're in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. Appreciate you coming to be in church tonight. Amen. And uh, God is God's so good, right? Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Don't forget Sunday morning, Sunday night, let's be out and be in the house of the Lord. Come expecting God to meet with us, all right? Amen. Here we are on the first day of February. Amen. Tomorrow's Groundhog's Day, in case you're excited about that. Amen. Planning something special for this, that special day in your life and uh, for Groundhog's Day. But uh, always look forward to Groundhog's Day, right? Amen. Hopefully winter's over. Praise the Lord. I hope it is. Hey, thank you. I got a witness there. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. I had one of my friends in the South call me yesterday, and he was talking about his sunburn. I said, oh, you're not right. You're not right. Amen. But uh, praise the Lord. A few announcements for you. The young people are raising money to go to fire conference here in just a um, month or two, a couple of months. And so they'll be uh, doing their chocolate strawberries, selling their chocolate strawberries for Valentine's Day. If you're interested in that, and you can talk to any of the young people, or Sister April, Brother Gabe, and they will uh, help you order those ch chocolate-covered strawberries. They look, they look and taste magnificent in the past, and I'm sure they'll be the same this year. They're $15 a dozen or $8 for a half dozen, and uh, so you can give your order to any of the young people or Brother Gabe or Sister April. And then on the 26th, Sunday night, the 26th, how many of you can guess what that'll be? The chili cook-off, all right? The annual chili cook-off, and this is a, we all, it's a lot of fun. Really enjoy doing this after church. It's great fellowship, but, but it also is a fundraiser for the young people to help them raise their funds so they can enjoy this trip. So um, that'll be on the Sunday night, the 26th. And uh, who's the reigning champion there? I can't remember. Was it Sister Carla? Was it Brother Gay? I'll claim it. It was me. <laughs> Sister LeBlue, okay, the reigning champ. Don't be ashamed of it, Sister Blue. Go ahead and claim it. Claim it. Take, take, take pride in it, right? And uh, so uh, she's the reigning um, chili master here. So uh, come out. But be planning on that, okay, and be, bring out some sin of your chili. Maybe you might well start working on your recipe, perfect, perfecting your recipe, and um, see what you got, all right? So that'll be on the 26th, and then uh, fire conference. And the, we do have tickets for fire conference. If any of the families are wanting to go, if you moms, dads are wanting to attend or go to fire conference, if you'll just see me and we can work out your tickets for you. And uh, if you try to go online and purchase them now, you're going to be way back there in the back. So you might want to see me so you can get up front, and we'll get you some good seats, all right? But um, talk to me and make sure but be thinking on that it's not i know we call it pentecostal fire youth conference but it's directed for everybody and it's a great meeting for everybody to go to I encourage you to do it all right and uh so look forward to fire conference men's advance is coming up here shortly in just another month men keep that in mind if you'd like to go to the men's advance it's going to be always the first uh, friday and saturday in uh, march so remember that as well okay Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, God's been good to me this week. I appreciate his goodness in my life. Amen. And I've uh, been praying this week for, for you. been praying for you. And just as God would direct my mind and, and lay you different ones on my heart this week, been praying that God would work in your life. And I don't know 
all of your needs or what you're needing from the Lord, but I do know that God is faithful to help us, right? And uh, I appreciate you praying for, for me and my family as we pray for you and your family. And, uh, but I'm, I'm thankful that, uh, that we can pray for one another. There's a lot of strength in that that we gain when we know that somebody else is praying alongside of us, right? And uh, I've heard, you've heard them talk about prayer partners before, but I do believe when you partner together with someone, the Bible tells us, right? Two or three agreeing together, touching any one thing, right? Shall be given, amen, shall be done. And I believe that there is the power and the prayer of the saints of God to join together and pray and uh, see what the Lord can do, amen. So I know we're, we're now in February. We've ended 31 days of prayer. So uh, don't go on a vacation from prayer. Don't want you to stop praying. Don't you say, well, I've got my year's worth of praying in in 31 days. That's not the point of it. But uh, let's just continue to pray and seek the Lord in our life every day. And, and just believe that God's going to answer some of these prayers that we've been praying over the last 31 days. All right? Amen. Would you like to stand and give the Lord praise tonight? Anybody? Anybody tonight? All right, go ahead, Brother Josh, and then Brother Jamin.
Sister Adrian, why don't you come get ready to sing? Who else over here? Somebody testify. Ahead. Mom, Sister Gallagher, stand up. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord.
had that intensity in our heart. Amen. I love the Lord. I wouldn't walk, I'd run. Amen. To get to Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're going to let the young people slip out tonight. I'm going to go with Brother Gabe and Sister April. Have some fellowship. And Brother Gabe's going to talk to them tonight. Amen. But I want to talk to you, if you would, and you have your Bible, you want to look with me to the book of Matthew. The book of Matthew tonight. Yeah. Hallelujah. Over the next uh, few weeks, I'd like to just share with you some of the things that's on my heart concerning family and uh, things that just feel burdened to share with you about our families. And um, it's not going to be, a, I wouldn't call it focus on the family or anything, but... Um, but anyway, uh, but I do want to share. You know, I feel like one man said it like this. Since the Garden of Eden, there has never been an attack on the family like we're seeing it right now. You think about that, and I, I, you know, I can't find any place in Scripture where there was any kind of attack on the family, on the family unit like we are seeing it now. I believe it's a spirit of an antichrist. I really do. I believe it's a, it's a, a spirit of the age and uh, end times that we're that we're facing, and uh, I think uh, we're we're in a a dark time, really. And uh, had someone mentioned to me, and I might have mentioned this early last on the weekend, but somebody mentioned to me that their children talk about Christian school, and they, their children were in a public school, and they say they're just not learning anything. And I told them, oh, yes, they are. They are learning a lot. It's just not reading, writing, and arithmetic. But they do learn a lot because there is such an attack upon family. We're constantly looking and hearing about uh, in, the, in the media uh, about divorce, about abortion, even sterilization, infidelity, infidelity transgender, homosexuality women's liberation, children's rights, on and on and on it goes, all about, all about breaking down the family and uh, watching as the family around us is disintegrated. We're living in a world where they want to do away with the parents' influence in the lives of their children and uh, want to take away uh, important decisions that should be uh, reserved for the parents of that child and uh, put them into the hands of government and of, of uh, school districts and, and uh, all of that. We're living in a wicked hour. We're living in a wicked hour. One British physician suggested that we do away completely with the family. He says it's the primary uh, force behind Western imperialistic worldview, if you can figure that out. Do away, that sounds like an amazing reason to get rid of the family. One author, Kate Millett, she said that uh, in her book, she said that the family is a force that is, puts uh, moms and women into bondage and that it should be annihilated and done away with. The uh, National Organization for Women wants to eliminate all marriage, all motherhood, all love. That's Grace Atkins. Atkinson, and she had, she had wrote that. And she said that it is, all of these are fatal to our society and that it needs to be done away with. She said marriage is legalized servitude, is what it is, legalized servitude. Man, I think they're all getting married for the wrong reason. What do you think? Amen. One man said that, um, that uh, the family is a devastating, devastating uh, unit. The family should be done away with or removed. He said that, uh, that the family is the problem. The family. Can you imagine that we would live in a day where there would be so much attack upon something that for so many generations and years and thousands of years has been the backbone of our society 
and the 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 stronghold for uh, raising our children, uh, teaching our children, uh, disciplining our children, and we're living in a day of of chaos for the family, living in a time when there is so much uh, attention directed at destroying and and doing away with the family and marriage. You, re it's almost every day that you hear in this culture, in this uh, that we're living in this cancel culture, in this woke society, that somebody is losing their job because of a stand against uh, transgender or homosexuality or same-sex marriage. And so they are because of Christians taking a stand. And so I feel like we're in a very uh, crucial hour for the family. And I've, I, just, I just want you to know as a church that I believe, I believe that uh, the, the family is still important. And I believe that we should do all that we can to defend our family and to strengthen our family and to keep our family together. And uh, I believe that, uh, you know, prayer, we talked about praying for our family. We did that the second week of January. We prayed for our family. And I feel like this is so, so necessary that we pray for one another, pray for our home, pray for our children. And uh, I, that I, I just feel like we're, our children are under, especially under attack today as well. There's many things that you as a parent are, are rock solid on. You were raised before and, and probably married before this uh, new, new wave or new ideas or new uh, culture began to, uh, to rise up. And we look, we, we've had the good fortune of being raised in families that were in a, in a day where this was not an issue. And things were not, things were not, these things were not talked about or things were, they were not a problem. But now we're living in a day where our children are faced with these things all of the time, all of the time. And uh, there's a, I think that you will find they are, they are flooded with the constantly being put in front of them about questioning there and I'm, I understand this. I sometimes I don't like using words that we're going to use tonight, right? But words like sexuality, I don't like using that. But it, it's it got to do what you got to do, all right? But so please understand. But I mean, we did. We're living in a day where now they are they are taught to question that, to question that, and where they are, uh, it's being brought into their school, brought into our life. It's put on bull, billboards and. And on the media, it's on the computer, it's, it's on YouTube, it's wherever you go, that it's facing. Our kids are being, that was a question that it never came up in, in my mind, never was presented to me as a child and as a young person. And most of you, that you would agree with me. But our children are facing these things today like never before. And our children, they need us. They need, they need parents. And they need the uh parents to stand with them, to pray for them, to pray with them, that they could stand in this wicked hour that we're, that we're living in. In the book of Matthew chapter 15, I want you to look with me, I want to read to you a few verses, and it's about the, the great faith of the Canaanite woman. In that story, I want to share with you and uh, some things that, that uh, I just want to felt like the Lord directed me to today, and I wanted to talk to you about these, all right? Then I want you to notice some things in this story. Then Jesus went thence, in verse 21, and departed into the coasts of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. 
But he answered and said, It is not meat to make the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto you, unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. What a remarkable answer to her prayer. What a remarkable answer to her prayer. I want you to notice that this is the, the what that. The devil was attacking the child. The devil was destroying the child. The devil, the, the daughter was grievously vexed of the devil. But when we read through this and we look at this story, I don't find anywhere about the daughters reaching at the daughter reaching out to Christ, the daughter crying out for mercy, the daughter uh, having any part, even even when uh, if you read through this, you find that it seems like that daughter is just kind of behind the scenes. It's not really uh, in the forefront. And even in the answer, Jesus said, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. As if, you know, he's speaking directly to her. Be it unto you, no reference to the daughter who's full of the devil or being vexed by the devil or possessed by the devil. All right, and no, no, no re reference to that in that, except that we find at the end her daughter was made whole from that very hour, and I've, I've, I feel like that. You know, sometimes we need to realize that we have, we have, Amen. It is important that we have the burden for our children, and that we seek God for our children, and that God hears the prayer of a parent for their children. And I, whether it, it don't matter if you are, uh, if, if you are just a young married couple and you've only got just, just starting your family, I, it don't matter. Or if you are a grandma or a grandpa or a great grandpa or great grandma, it really does not, it don't matter because I'm telling you, you still have a burden for your family. You're still, you never, you will never get to the point where you say, wow, I've got the empty nest and everything's good and it, it's all going to be okay. I'm, I'm, I'm done with it. I'm telling you, it never works that way. Because the matter of fact, it seems like it even becomes more heavy of a burden. and The, the burden becomes heavier. Now you're praying for uh, not only your marriage, but you're praying for the marriage of your children. Now you're praying for your grandchildren and their salvation and eventually even their marriages right their salvation and their children and those great grandchildren and some of you probably even dealing with great great grandchildren all right you never get you cannot get away from the burden that we have and i might say the responsibility that we have to take our children before the lord and to intercede for them and and to go before god and cry out for them First of all, I want you to notice in this story the destruction of the child, the destruction of the daughter. She was being destroyed by the devil. The devil wanted to destroy this young lady. All right? The devil was, and I believe that every one of our children, amen, that Satan seeks to devour and to destroy every one of our children. And he would love to, and I think that many times, sometimes the way that he brings more discouragement to the Christian parent is through our children. He discourage, he knows that, man, how close this is to our heart. And if he can work in the heart of our children, he knows that he can even defeat us or discourage us because, of the, because they are so close to us. And I, but he is out to destroy children. He's out to destroy our family. And I believe that we need to recognize, we need to recognize what it is that is happening. Recognize what it is. You may say it's a fad. You may say it's a season of life. You may say they're just going through a time. 
they're just avid, maybe whatever, but whatever it is, maybe you say they're just sowing wild oats or whatever, but we need to recognize that the devil wants to destroy our children. And while you may say, well, it's just a little rebellious stage. It's a stage of life. Satan wants to destroy our children. And it does not matter what stage of life they are in whether they're a young child or whether they're a teenager or whether they're a young adult or wh wh whatever age, Satan wants to destroy them. And it is our responsibility to recognize that the devil is out working in our family. He is seeking to destroy us. When we look at the book of Ephesians chapter 5, in that great chapter where, he be, where Paul begins to talk about the family, and he begins to list those verses. I believe he starts in chapter, verse 21 of chapter 5, and he begins with the mothers and fathers, and he goes to children, and then he even goes to parents. All right, he goes through all four of them, ending up in chapters, the first part of chapter 6. But in, in, but in Ephesians chapter 5, and I believe it's 19, is where he says, Be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Now, it's not a coincidence that he puts that at a point where he starts to transition into talking about our family. I believe that it's necessary that we be filled with the Spirit so that we can pray and intercede and fight for our family and fight through the power of the Holy Ghost for our children. And, uh, you know, if your children are lost, if your children are in church, if your children are so young they've not really had a time, opportunity to give their life to the Lord, it really don't matter because Satan is trying to destroy your children. It's, 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 a, it's amazing today because we are looking at some of the ways that Satan is seeking to destroy our, our children. And do you know that children are introduced to pornography, many children are introduced to pornography at an extremely young age. Extremely young age. As, as young as five years old, they're four years old in some cases, they're being, being introduced to this. Do you know what, sometimes we do not even take their salvation seriously. Listen to me. Because, well, they're too young. They don't understand. They're too young. They, they don't understand. They're five years old. They don't really understand what's going on. And we don't, we don't take it seriously until, well, well, we start sensing that maybe they're starting to under. Man, I'll tell you what. The devil's already working. The devil's already working. Hey, man, some of these children that come in on our buses, Brother Caleb, man, Satan has already got a foothold in their life. And they're raised in an unchristian home where there is no supervision, no filters, nothing. And they are exposed to all of this. I'm telling you what, we're living, we're fighting against the devil that is trying to destroy our children. We can't sit back and say, well, I'm waiting for 12 years old, that age of accountability. Hey, man, no, we need to dive in right now while your children are young. Hey, man, because I'm telling you, Satan is not waiting. Hey, man, he's not delaying his destruction. Hey, man, but he is working. Working. He is working. I want to credit this mom that she recognized that it was the devil. I want to give this mom credit that she recognized that it wasn't normal behavior for her daughter. That this wasn't a stage. That this wasn't right. I want to give credit to this mom that she recognized, hey amen, that the devil was working here. Hey Amen. I want to let you know something. We need to we need to open our eyes, look a little closer, and realize, man, the devil is working here. The devil is working here. You know, sometimes I know. I remember when your when your kids are little, and they they act up. You know, they they're misbehaving. Well, they didn't get their nap. They're teething. They're this. Not feeling well. Had a bad day. We start early, right? Making excuses for our children. And I've seen parents, when their children are grown and they're out of church and away from God, still making excuses. Well, they got hurt at church. 
come on. They got hurt at church. People didn't do them right. Right? They're still trying to find themselves. Yeah. We got to, you know what? Sometimes we need to recognize and admit to this is the devil working. He's trying to destroy my child. See, if we don't recognize, if we, if we constantly make excuses in our own mind or verbally to others, if we make excuses, we will never, never assign the destruction to the devil. And we don't get serious about it. I hope, I hope, I hope you're not falling out with me here. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Amen, because I, I really, you know what? Sometimes we just need to realize. This is the devil working, trying to destroy my children. This is the devil. This, no, this is not right. This is not right. No, I'm sorry. I'm not going to make an excuse for it. This is the enemy that is working to destroy my child, and I need to do something about it. I want to give this mom credit because not only did she recognize it was the devil, but that she approached Jesus. She approached Jesus. Now listen, this is a Canaanite woman approaching a Jewish man, Jesus, all right? This is what we all know about the, the, the separation that is there. Had, they did not appreciate each other. They did not accept. There was, it was not socially even accepted for them to communicate with each other. But she had a need and she was serious about it. She recognized that this is serious enough that I need to get to Jesus and I need to come to him and I need to talk to him about this and I need to get him to help me. I need to get him to help me. And sometimes, you know what? We need to recognize, amen, recognize this is the devil working and I need to get this before Jesus and I need to take this before the Lord and I need to get serious about this and I need to intercede for my children, amen, so that they can get deliverance and so that we can see this, the, have survive, amen, survive and have, have life, amen. Now, I can tell you, you know what? The devil will go a long way. Destruction. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I've got to hurry tonight. But destruction, take our children a long way. And sometimes, you know what? If we recognize what's happening, the earlier we recognize what is happening, the quicker we act upon it, I believe we can save our children from much destruction much destruction. Lord, help me tonight. Amen. And I think that when, we, when I look at this, that's not only, notice that she came before the Lord. I want to give this woman credit because, because notice the delay that was here. She prayed. She called out to Christ. She called out to Christ. She was ignored. He did not even answer her. Look at the delay. That it was, that it was not an immediate response. There was not, you know, this is serious. Sometimes we, re, we need to realize that, you know what, maybe God don't answer the first time you pray. And maybe God's not, maybe, you know, God is, God sometimes is working. But you know what? Hey, man, we still need to keep praying. Keep calling out. Amen. God, Christ ignored her, but she didn't just walk away and say, well, I guess we'll have to figure it out somehow. No, she began to continually intercede for her children. She began to continually intercede for her daughter. God, you've got to save her. You've got to save her. Lord, hear me. Lord, would you answer my petition? Lord, would you hear my prayer? The delay the delay. Notice this, the discouragement. Because the disciples said, send her away. The, the spiritual ones said, send her away. Man, she is, she's bothering us. Would you please send her away? Because she's crying after us. She's even bothering us. She's even bothering us. Oh, listen, are we going to get bothered? 
Amen. Are we going to bother somebody by, by interceding for our children? I hope not. I hope not because our children, amen, we're living a desperate hour. And we're living a dark time. The devil's working like never before. Amen. We've got to call out and pray and seek God for our children and for our family. God help us. This great delay, the discouragement. But I want to give this woman credit for her determination. She did not stop. She did not stop. She was insulted, but she didn't take it as an insult. She, it was like it did not even matter. You know, I think when you're hurting so bad because of the situation in your life, what other things, some things that would have normally hurt us, we don't even feel, right? Because we are hurting so bad. She it didn't seem like the insult even phased her. When Jesus said, hey, is it meat that I should give crumbs, the children's bread, to cast it to the dogs? My, what, what, a, what, a, uh, what a phrase. What a way to talk to somebody. What a phrase. What a way to, stay, to address somebody. But it didn't stop her. It didn't stop her. She pushed on. She was determined that she was going to get an answer. And she would not stop until the Lord said, amen, the Lord said, amen, all right, all right, whatever it is that you're wanting, be it unto thee. Amen, the deliverance, the Bible said that her daughter was delivered. Man, don't give up on your children. I know it don't matter how far they've gone. Don't matter how far the devil's taken them. Amen. But let's, do, let's pray and continue to intercede for your children, to save them, to bring them back. Amen. Or to protect them. Because Satan wants to destroy them. Not giving up on our children. Notice this. Jesus said, great is thy faith. That phrase, that is an amazing phrase. He only used it similar to that one other time, and that was with the centurion when he said, I've not seen so great a faith in all of Israel. Amen. Such great faith, great faith. You know what it takes? We just really need some great faith to believe that God can act for our children, that God can act for our children. Now you say, but Brother Dave, my children are grown. Hey Amen. I don't know how old this daughter was. The Bible won't tell us how old the daughter was. But all that we know is she had a mom that was ready to go to Jesus and pray until God answered her call, her petition, her prayer. Amen. God may work for you and work for your children. Amen. We need to pray for our children. Pray for your children. We need to pray that Jesus... Amen. That Jesus will call them to salvation. Amen. That Jesus, that nothing hinders them from coming to Christ. We need to be praying for our children that nothing hinders them. I think that it's, it's sad, but I could, I could tell you that it seems like children nowadays seem like it gets so much against them already before they even get to the age to marry. And they've got baggage. They've got all kinds of stuff. We need to pray, God, don't let anything hinder them. Hinder them. Some children have already seen things they can't get out of their mind. They're already battling things in their, in their mind, in their body, because of exposure. We, pray, we need to pray, God, don't let anything hinder them. Don't let anything stand in their way. We need to pray that God would at, let them respond to salvation. I believe that God will speak to the sinner. I believe God deals with the sinner. For those children that are away from God, and we're, you're praying, with, I believe that God, do, guess what? Your children, it's, that's right here. Right here, these little children, pray that God, when you deal with them, that they'll respond to you. 
And Lord, help me to be ready to, and alert to see, Lord God, they're responding. That it's now's the time. Don't be afraid to pray with them at that moment. Don't be afraid to, to pray that God would touch them even at that very moment. Pray that when God deals with them that they will respond. We need to pray for our children that they will grow in their sanctification and walk with the Lord. That not only that they get saved, but that they are drawing closer to God all the time. Pray for your children that they will grow closer to God. Say, my children are saved. That's awesome. But we need to pray that they continue to grow. Grow. We need to pray that they marry in the faith. That not only do they marry in the faith, but once they are married, they stay in the faith. Hallelujah. Start praying now. It's not too early to start praying for your children's marriage. Say they're just young. Start praying now. Pray for, start praying that God sends the spouse that they need into their life. Teach your children that, hey, we marry in the faith. Amen. We're not, we don't go outside. We don't do missionary dating or any of that kind of stuff. We're going to marry in the faith. Then we want our children, once they are married, to stay in the faith. We need to pray that God would help our children's mind to stay pure. That they would not become so polluted in their thinking that it would affect their teen years, that it would affect their marriage so forth. We need to pray God work in their mind. We need to pray for our children that they would learn how to be obedient to the Lord. And we need to allow them to teach them to be obedient to the word of God and to be obedient to the voice of God. And we need to allow them to be obedient to the word of God. Listen to me. We need to allow them to be obedient to the word of God and we need to be, uh, allow them to be obedient to the voice and the calling of God upon their life. We need to be, uh, teach them to be obedient, and we need to allow them, allow them to be obedient. Amen. I pray, Lord, help our children. Help our children. Amen. I think that that God has his hand upon our family. But I know the devil will, will destroy any opportunity. Any opportunity. When Job had that hedge, his family was protected. When God allowed that hedge to be lifted, and he said, you can do any, anything you want, but don't touch Job. What did he go for? Went for his family. Went for his children. Why would that be? Could it be that the devil knows that if he can get to our children, he can defeat us? Amen. Would you stand with me tonight? Whether your children's saved, whether they're lost, whether they're really young, wherever they're at, wherever they're at, I just want you to know that, man, we've got to realize the devil's to destroy them. We have to do what we need to do to reach them. And sometimes I think that we, we are not as proactive in the salvation of our children as we need to be. We sit back, we wait, we wait until they start showing some signs and they start, you know, and I understand every child's different, I understand that. But I don't think that, I think we know what? We need to be speaking into their ear. We need to be talking to them. They need to be hearing from us. If your children are lost, you know, I, I know you have to be careful. You don't want to drive them away from your family by talking about the Lord every breath out of you, you know. But you do need to let them know, look, I'm praying for you. 
I'm praying for you. Praying for you. Amen. You know, when I read the story of the prodigal son, I read there and I think about how that father had to allow sin to run its course in his son. Do you not think that was heartbreaking for the father? He never left to go after him. He never left to try to make it easy for him in the pig pen. He, didn't, he wasn't trying to feed him while he was in the pig pen, or he wasn't trying to clothe him while he was in the pig pen. He wasn't even there to give him a clothes pin for his nose so he didn't smell the pig pen. Nothing. I heard one man say, reading this, he said, you need to let sin run its course. While this is true, it's hard to do. Because many times what we want to do is we want to try to intervene and try to step in and try to really what we ought to do is what this lady did. Go to Jesus. Go to Jesus. Amen. Because eventually the pig pen's going to get smelly and they're going to get hungry. And they're going to be thinking about home. I pray, Lord Jesus, deal with our children. Deal with our children. Would you come with me to the altar tonight? Yeah. Let's pray for our children.